Hello, hello, and welcome to Rising Coaches with Sophia Bernardi. This week's episode is behind the scenes of October 2024. So I have been doing this series all year and I have loved it so much where I take you behind the scenes of my month and share with you the good, the bad, the ugly, the lessons, the learnings and everything in between. I share with you what I did and where I'm at with my goals as well. And I've been very raw, real, transparent and vulnerable. It's not always comfortable doing it, especially when you feel like you haven't progressed as much in certain areas as you'd like. But I want to be really transparent with you because business and life is not just some walk in the park where everything just always goes according to plan. And sometimes we need to learn things in slightly more uncomfortable ways before we truly get the lesson. So I've been loving this series. I've learned a lot about myself. I've even learned a lot about you guys and what you like and what you're enjoying and and the takeaways you take from my journey as well. So I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, And there's a lot that I would do differently next year when it comes to my goals. And I'll share a bit about that later but first hello let's let's talk about the the month of October in terms of what I did so I spent the first week in Sydney with Geordie we went for a bit of a work trip but it was also very much a fun holiday as well and we were you know thinking of calling it our quarterly weekend uh trip away like we like to do four of them a year it's also part of my um goals for the year is is to go away on four trips with Geordie one week long one and then um you know three or so like smaller ones and we were thinking of making Sydney like the smaller one considering it was like half work and 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 half fun but honestly guys like I can't believe we're we're in November now so we've got two months left of the year and I just don't think we're gonna go away overseas like we were anticipating we were thinking maybe Thailand but If I'm being completely honest with you guys, I have been traveling all year. I have been to Fiji. I've been to New Zealand. I've been across Europe. I have been many states in Australia. Like I have been traveling so much and the thought of going away again just isn't really lighting me up. And so I don't want to go away for the sake of it. So I'm thinking we're going to say Sydney was our week away trip, even though there was a bit of work involved. It was honestly so much fun. Like we lived it up. We went to the nicest restaurants. We had so much quality time. Like... And I think that's just Jordi and I run businesses. There's always going to be business involved. Um, You know, it's it's hard for that to not be the reality. And so I think we're going to call that our week trip because we were there for about a week. Um, And then we will book a a quarterly weekend trip away. And then I've technically speaking ticked that goal, even though one of my takeaways recently was that that shouldn't have been a goal because that's just what we've always done in our relationship every single year. And so I don't know why I made it a goal and had just had to have brain capacity in sharing that every month on the podcast like and thinking about it I want it to be more organic and flowy and not forceful in any way because we've never needed to have it as like this big rule or goal in our relationship it's just something we've desired to do and therefore done and I found myself like because of the podcast like and sharing this series being like no we have to go for seven days because I said part of the goal was like going away for a week and like and then I'm like hold on that is just that's not that's not right so anyways we went to Sydney and we had so much fun I then a few days later went to Adelaide for um for a few days I had to dress up as a fairy which was crazy for my mother-in-law, I suppose you could call her. Um, So yeah, Geordie's mum, she was like a part of this fair in the country um, that she had put together and she needed some fairies. So me and my friend went up there with Geordie and yeah, we dressed up as fairies for the days. That was interesting. Um, I also run one of my free events when I came back to Brisbane. Um, I had one of my good friends um, come and visit me and stay with me for a few days here in Brisbane as well. Uh, We did a big photo shoot, like we hired this amazing house and we did an awesome photo shoot like with two of my friends and then my photographer who I absolutely love and I also had one of my other friends um, who used to live in Brisbane come and visit and um, yeah spend a few days in Brisbane so I got to see her as well so that was kind of the month of of October lots of friends lots of travel um, and, and work spread in between that on top of that I have been doing 75 hard as I mentioned um, last month I started it I think on the 17th of 
uh, September and I finish on the 30th of November. So one month to go and I'm honestly loving it. I've lost about three or four kilos now and I don't calorie count. I'm not a freak about any of it. Like I'm just literally just following the the rules of 75 hard that I've made up. So as I mentioned in last month's episode, I'm doing my own version of it. So I'm not doing the traditional rules. I've done that before and completed it. Um, my intentions are different this time around, but this has been so enjoyable. Um, and it was really just my, my intention was just to learn how to hold boundaries and standards and discipline even when I travel because I've had to acknowledge and accept that I do travel a lot and so I traveled in Adelaide um, in the month of October and I traveled to Sydney and I had friends come over and I had friends stay and I did all these things and I stuck to my rules no matter what and it was so awesome and freeing to be like cool I can do fun things I can go places and it doesn't have to impact my health right and so that's been amazing so I've already served the intention of this challenge but I'm just loving it like I'm losing weight I feel good I feel energized my skin's clearer like I'm just feeling so good so the rules that I'm doing is three liters of water every day 60 minutes of exercise every day no deep fried food and no processed sugar that is all I'm doing and it feels freaking good so um yeah loving that so that's the that's the month of October now let me share with you the goals that I set for the entire year and where I'm at with them so the first goal was to earn 600k cash for the year to weigh 65 kilos go on a week trip with Geordie and quarterly weekend uh, getaways get 30,000 podcast downloads and invest $100,000 in shares. So let me share with you where I'm at with all of them. So with the 600K cash, I just checked my zero and we have crossed over the $400,000 mark. That is very exciting. I've never earned $400,000 in an entire year. This is so cool. In cash, in sales, we have well, well exceeded the 600K and, and more so. Um, but in sales, um, in, in cash, it's very it's very different. So we're at 400. So we're technically speaking $200,000 away from reaching the goal. And I've got two months to do it. So if I'm being completely honest, I don't think we're going to hit that goal, but I'm bloody proud of getting as close as we possibly could. And yeah, we've still got, we've still got another two months of the year. So we could get to probably 500k, um, which would be really awesome. Um, but I'm not sure we would smash that, that 600k, but we have learned so much this year that has that has served and supported us and allowed us to scale sustainably. And I know that next year we will reach that and more. Like I've, I've got a really strong feeling about that based on all of the building, the testing, the iterating, the implementing that has gone into this year, like the fine tuning of the details. Like it's been very much an iterating year and that that can slow down progress, but then it helps you to really take off. And that's really what I feel like this year has been. So I feel really, really proud of where we're at. Um, it was a big stretchy goal. I knew that going into it, it was like almost double what I had ever earned, you know, in a year before. And, and we've gotten really, really close. And that being said, not going to give up now. We've still got two months and we're going to get as close as we possibly can during that time. The next goal is to weigh 65 kilos. So I am currently in the 76s. So we are about 10 kilos away. To be honest, when I look back at this goal now, I'm starting to feel like 65 kilos isn't necessary almost, um, but I don't want to change the goal because it's what I said at the, the start of the year. So I just want to get as close as I can to that. Um, it's just that I'm really loving the way that I look and I feel right now. And I can't imagine... I feel like if I was 10 kilos lighter than I am now, I would start to just maybe not look like as strong as I need to or fit as I need to. So I think if I lose like maybe six kilos and get to 70, I would love to reassess how I look there because I've noticed such a difference in my body just losing four kilos or three or four kilos. I feel so good. And so I'm, I'm going to keep the goal there. Um, and I'm not saying that, you know, I, I couldn't or shouldn't be that weight, but I'm just really loving the way I look now. So I can imagine if I'm six kilos lighter than this, considering, you know, putting on muscle as well and everything like that, I feel like that's going to be, um, you know, I'm going to be really happy at that weight. But I love that I've just been very, very slowly all year losing weight, like very sustainably. Um, 
and but most of the growth and progress has happened during this 75 hard and we've got another month of this and to be honest this has been so sustainable and enjoyable for me that I'm planning on doing another round of it back to back but just adding one slight tweak which is that I can um, treat myself to one dessert um, per week so like my rule is no fried food and no sugar but one for like one meal or one treat per week I can have either a fried thing or a sweet thing and just because the reason I'm doing that is because you know I want to like whilst this has been so sustainable and enjoyable if it's something I want to be able to do for life I need to be able to have some flexibility there like it's not like when I get married one day and like I can't eat my my wedding cake because because it's got sugar in it you know that it's not sustainable forever so I need to be able to slowly introduce something where there's still the boundaries and the discipline and listening to myself but then also still incorporating a bit of like enjoying life if that makes sense and yeah I don't know how to word that better because I am enjoying my life but I'm talking about a forever game and I can forever do this I reckon um but I need to be able to be allowed to you know get a yochi with my friends one day and it'd be okay if there's some m&ms on there or whatever it is um but I've learned so much about the the standards and the discipline and listening to my body and my hunger cues and everything from this that I'm really loving this which is why I just want to do a whole nother round of it but just introduce that one thing so that one night a week on a date night or one day a week with with friends that I can do something like that if I want to I don't have to but I I can if I want to um so yeah that's where I'm at with that so yeah I'm at 76 ish kilos a bit more and um yeah if I can get to 70 by the end of the year um that will be amazing that's a bit of a stretch because it's losing more weight in two months than I have all year. But now that I'm doing this challenge and I am losing a fair bit of weight and everything, I think I could get close to it. And yeah, I'll I'll see how I go there, but that would be awesome. Um, The book, A Weekend Trip with Geordie, like I said, we've done um, two or three quarterly weekend trips. I think maybe we've done two official, yeah, two. Um, And then we've done the week away. So if we need to book in one more weekend, quarterly trip and I'm going to plan that with Geordie this weekend so that's really exciting then for the 30k podcast downloads we are sitting at about 17,300 so we are over halfway but it's been very slowly and steadily growing we have a very warm audience that listen to the podcast every week and they love it and they message me and give me the best feedback if that's you by the way thank you so much like you mean the absolute world to me um I do just find that the podcast grows really slowly um but to be honest when I reflect on all of my goals this is the one I've prioritized the least like yes I've been consistent in posting I've never missed a week um however I haven't really gone too out of my way to do things to grow the podcast outside of how we normally promote it. Like we run a little bit of ads to it, but we only did that for a very short moment. Um, I haven't done a giveaway or anything like that. So maybe I'll do something like that. I really should, to be honest, because I really care about this podcast and I would love to grow it. Um, And it's just not something I've prioritized as much. And then as for the invest $100,000 in shares, I uh, made a very big investment um, uh, just a few days ago. So we have well and truly surpassed $100,000 in shares um, for the year. So I've invested a lot more than that over the years, but I'm talking about 100K for this year. So we've officially ticked off one of the five goals, um, which means I only need to focus on four goals now for the rest of the year. But it leads me back on to what I wanted to share. Um, You know, a few minutes ago, I mentioned I'd come back to this and that is a reflection or a realization or a learning that I've had from this experience is that next year, if I was to do this again, I would not want to set five goals again. I would honestly want to set two. So it's really interesting because it's a process I teach my clients. I recommend that they only set two goals and that's something I've done for many years. And then for whatever reason, I ignored my own advice at the beginning of 2024 and I set five goals because I wanted to talk, like speak into several areas of my my life and that felt aligned at the time but throughout the months I started to realize why it is that I originally you know say you know only two goals and it's because it it diverts your energy a lot you know and whilst you know 
only two of these goals for the year have been like huge ones. Like that's been the 600K cash and the weighing 65 kilos. The booking trips away is not a hard thing to do. Um, The 30,000 podcast downloads, really, if I had just focused on the 600K cash, that would have been a byproduct of doing that. Like that would have naturally happened because the podcast does bring us sales. And then the 100K in shares, again, it's so easy to do. I have a very profitable business. I have so much cash flow just sitting there. I just have a reminder on my phone for the very start of every month to invest, you know, eight and a half thousand dollars and then I do it. And some months I do significantly more than that. So it's been really easy. And because it's just part of what I do, like just because I've I've invested over a hundred thousand dollars in shares now, it doesn't mean I'm just gonna stop doing that. No, it's still a reminder in my calendar to do every single month and I'll continue to do that so upon reflection I'm like why did I set these as goals when they're actually just standards they're actually bare minimums it's just what I do and that's been really frustrating to me but I didn't want to go back on my word of you know then reflecting on this journey at the end of the year and being like oh well at the start of the year I said five goals and now I've only got two like it didn't make sense to give up on any so I've just had to sit in that and yeah, upon reflection, if I had my time again, I would have just set the 600K cash goal and the 65 kilos and all of my energy would have just gone towards those two things. And then I think, honestly, there's a chance I would have reached them sooner or or progressed a lot more in them. Um, and as a result, have improved in other areas as well. So next year, I will be going back to my, my original beliefs around goal setting, and that is to have just two goals. Um, and there's a chance that I will set the exact same goals, like earn 600K cash and weigh 65 kilos if they still feel true for me and a stretch enough for me um you know in fact I think we could probably set bigger than 600k cash for next year because whilst we haven't reached it we're certainly close to it and we're going to be taking all of these learnings and progress right into the beginning of 2025 and and that'll make us be able to skyrocket much faster and then like I said if I've only got two goals I'm really going to be focused on it at such a deep level that it's more likely to happen um so yeah might even stretch it further and 65 kilos, I'll see how, I, how I'm how i looking and feeling when I, you know, um, finish this first round of 75 hard, if that still feels like even a desire or if, if I'm happy to just like get to 70 kilos and, and maintain that um, because I'm feeling so good. Like, um, yeah, I'm just really feeling good. So anyways, that's a bit of a ramble, but I just wanted to share with you like the thoughts that I've had as I've started to reflect on this year and, and my progress. I felt that I've progressed a little bit slower in some of these areas than I would have liked. And when I reflect on why, I think one, this has just been a big iterating year. You know, we've really scaled, we've made a lot of changes and with that can come that stop and start feel. Um, but then two, just like having split my energy with so many different goals has slowed things down a little bit as well. But no regrets. I've I've learned a lot and I'm still all of these goals are still important to me and a priority for me. Um it's just that I've realized that a lot of them were just standards and probably didn't need to consume headspace for the year. Um so yeah. Anyways, we've got four goals to go. I'm gonna get as far as I possibly can with all of them. And yeah, thank you so much for tuning in, listening. I hope you learned a lot. Um, I would love to hear your feedback, your takeaways. Come message me on Instagram at Sophia Rose Bernardi. Um, your, your feedback and your thoughts and your takeaways mean so, so much to me. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited for the month of November. I think it's going to be a really special one. Um, we've made some really beautiful changes in the business and really feeling good in my life and really grateful, like overall, like my health, my friendships, my relationship, my business, it's, it's all feeling really good. Um, and so I'm really excited to see what all of these lessons and learnings and, and tweaks we've made recently is going to do for the remainder of the year. So I will speak to you with the next behind the scenes um, episode in a month's time. And hopefully we've made loads and loads of progress. I love you all and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode and want my help to scale your coaching business much faster, then I want to invite you to join Scale School, the 12-month mastermind for ambitious female coaches ready to scale their business to 30K months and beyond the simple, sustainable way. Scale School is the only way to work with me. So if you'd like to learn more and see if this mastermind is for you, simply click the link in the show notes or come DM me at Sophia Rose Bernardi on Instagram to chat. Until next time, take care.